not want to ruin this beautiful foot sculpt, huh? That thing for feet has real- Hey! What's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another McFarlane Toys action figure review on the 2020 DC Multiverse Hell Bat Suit Batman and Unchained Armor Superman. I gotta give the big thanks to McFarlane Toys for making this review possible and sending out these free product samples to review for you guys. If you want to see the latest from McFarlane Toys, be sure to check the link in the description below. And already both of these figures look awesome in the packaging right over here. I'm very stoked for both of them. On the side, you can see it says Superman. Superman Unchained Armor, Batman Hell Bat Suit, and then on the back right over here you can see comic cover images right here, which I think is great. They each come with a collector card, which is really cool. And then on the bottom you can see comic covers from the other figures from this set, and we do get a Birds of Prey Harley Quinn on the back right over here, but I don't see one in the wave yet, right? So maybe that will come out later, but for the rest of these there are figures out. And then you can see it says Superman Batman on the sides, and then you get a little bit of the window creeping up over at the top. Not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack these figures figures open. And here's the Unchained Armor Superman and Hell Bat Suit Batman figures out of the packaging. And just looking at these two figures right over here, man, they look awesome, uh, especially the Hell Bat Suit. Uh, I'm just head over heels for that figure, man. I really like it a lot. The Superman one is cool too, but yeah, uh, the Batman one, oh my god. Anyway, uh, there's not too many accessories. So let's first take a closer look at all the contents and then we'll take a closer look at the figures. So each of these figures come with the same base that came with the Detective Comics 1000 Batman figure. You can see that we get the DC logo right over there. You can get the peg We're sticking up right there. So that's cool. I like that. And then we also get a card for each of them. Again, nice thick card stock right there. And then you can see a read-up over here and some specs. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. Then here's the specs and read-up on the Hell Bat suit. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. And here's a closer look at the card really quick. Just taking a good look right here. I like that. Looking pretty sweet. Then here's looking at the Unchained Armor Superman. Pretty cool. <laughs> so something that did catch my attention is that I feel like the paint detail on the face of this figure doesn't necessarily match uh, the deco or the design that we're seeing on the source image. So that kind of throws me off. And then I found this other image of the Unchained Armor Superman. And yeah, it didn't really line up with that one. Like those two images aren't even consistent with each other. So I don't know. And then based off of these images, it looks like the Unchained Armor is supposed to come with accessories like this pickaxe kind of thing for the right hand and a shield for the left. Would have been cool if the figure came with those. I haven't read the book, so I don't know how significant those weapons are, but either way, I still think this looks pretty cool. I love the mashup of this metallic blue, and then you get this nice bright silver, very matted black right over here with this solid red. So I really like the combination of colors that we're seeing just for the head sculpt right here. I don't know, I just like this design overall. Kind of reminds me of a mech, you know what I mean? So you get my mechs and my superheroes mashed. I dig that. So looking really nice. The rest of the figure looks great. I love the solid red that we're seeing right here. That looks really good. And we get this nice bright metallic red with the metallic blue. Man, it's so awesome. And then you get this matted black throughout with this texturing. Kind of reminds me of Kevlar or something. I really dig that a lot. I haven't attached uh, the wings yet, but I will show them off in just a second. There's the back of the figure, and there's the butt, and then everything's all armored out right over here on the front. Really like how the arms look. The solid red with the blue just looks really good. And I gotta say, the paint apps on all these figures are fairly solid. I haven't had any issues or seen any weird paint splotches or mishaps with alignment, you know, with the lines or anything. Like, mostly everything is just really, really solid. I like how we get a glossy black right over here on the back with the mat underneath it. That's really neat. Get this nice ribbed texturing right over here on the boots. Really dig this. Nice sculpt and everything right over here as well. And you do get the peg holes. So I like these wings. I'm calling them wings anyway. The only thing is that they kind of do weigh the figure down in the back. So you get these pegs right over here and they just port right here into the back of the figure. Uh, there's no indicator as far as which one goes on the left side or which one goes on the right side. I feel like it's more or less the same. Let's see if I put this on the other side if I get something different going on. And it feels like, okay, yeah, this piece definitely fits in better on the left side. So you kind of just have to go with trial and error over here, I guess. And here, let's get this one in there. And and that's kind of lining up. It's just not going in there as well as it did on the other one. So you kind of have to shimmy it in there. There it goes. Okay, so it's all the way in now. So that's pretty cool. I like how this looks, by the way. I did do this thing, you know, while it was resting, kind of like that. I don't know if it actually looked like that in the comics. I'm not really familiar with this. I haven't read any books with it in 
it. So yeah, it looks pretty neat like this though. I like it. So yeah, the figure can get a little back heavy with the wings right over here, but as you can see, it's standing vertically just fine with them there. Uh, you can hinge these up and down and you can rotate them. And then the head can look up a bit right there. You can get the head looking downward that much. You get side to side motion and some head tilting. Uh, you do get butterfly joints inside here, these armpit joints anyway. Uh, they shift forward and back only a little bit and they shift down and up even less some. Uh, but we do get a ball jointed shoulder that does move outward that far and you can move it all the way in. Can do a full 360 right here with it getting out of the way of this big old shoulder piece right over here. You get a bicep swivel in there and a single jointed elbow once again on the Superman figure. You get wrist rotation and it hinges up and down or sideways depending on how you have it configured. Unfortunately the diaphragm joint does not allow any forward crunching at all whatsoever. That's frustrating. It will go back a little bit you do get side to side motion and a little bit of pivoting then you do get a waist crunch that does move forward and back you can also move side to side and pivot at the waist the hips move outward very far you can get them to kick forward very far and uh, not back that butt plate is kind of blocking it and then there's no real thigh swivel up here again it's just at the hip where it kind of shifts around so there is some movement inward, but not really outward right there. You get double jointed knees. Then the boot can move down right here. It will move up. Uh, you can shift it side to side and there's like no ankle pivot here. I mean, that's as much ankle pivot I can get out of this. So that's a bit frustrating. I wish we had more ankle pivot on this figure, but we do get toe articulation. <laughs> Then here's the hell bat suit next to the reference image and it does look a little different right like this looks a whole lot bulkier than the image that we're seeing on the right but I actually don't mind and I think I read the books where we did see this I believe this was part of the whole storyline when Damian Wayne comes back to life right doesn't Bruce wear this to go rescue Damian Wayne to like an interdimensional hell that Darkseid put him in I could be totally mistaken let me know in the comment section below if you can remember off the top of your head but this looks sick I love love how this came out, man. I love this visor right over here. Nice clean orangish red paint. I really dig that theme throughout. Nice glossy black paint right here and you can see some nice looking silver and there's a gunmetal gray right over here on the back. I mean looking at this line work right here, it just came out really clean. And then we get kind of like this duller black right over here for these big old shoulder pads. And they're not really pointy or anything. You know, they, they are dull at the end. And I love this orangish red right over here for this symbol. That looks so clean and crisp. I'm really happy with that. Just really pops. I just love this line work throughout. You know, having this glowing type of red thing going on just looks so cool to me. Love how it looks with the glossy black right there. These forearms look amazing. I love how we get this wear with the gunmetal. That looks so sick. I really like this right here with the fists. The hands look really good. You get an open hand on this side right here, which is really neat too. Really like that sculpt right there. Nice details. Really digging this. Man, that looks so awesome. Look at the gunmetal gray. Then the whole belt right here looks really good. Here's looking at the Hellbat butt. Then some of that lower spine area sculpted in there. We'll get into the wings in just a moment. Looking at the legs right over here. Dude, I'm telling you, man, clean paint apps are worth being impressed over. I, I just really dig that. I mean, I wish they would paint it over the pins, I guess. But really, that looks very clean. You can maybe see a little bit of black coming through. But for the most part, this deco looks really clean. I love these knee pads right over here. Again, with the glossy black. I love having these variations of black on the figure. And looking right over here, getting like these boosters, I guess. And then right here, you can see the little spikes on the top of the boots. And he does have peg holes. So I really like these wings right over here. These are very cool. They're made out of a very hard plastic, you know. So just listening to that, you can tell what kind of plastic that is. And you do get these hexagon shapes right here. So when you pour it in, they're very specific to fit into that hexagon shape. And just ports right in like so. And then you can do the same thing on this side right here. I guess it's easier to do it when they're folded out and they just fit right into place very nicely. So, you know, you have display options over here. I like seeing them folded up like that sometimes. I think that looks really cool. But of course, for me, I think it looks even cooler when you fold them all the way out. Oh man, what a great looking wingspan. I just think that's so cool. I've always been fascinated by bat wings. Bat's my favorite animal, so I don't know. I just think that looks super cool. Love this. It's actually like a combination of three things I absolutely love. Bats, 
Batman and mechs. I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of all three combined. For the Hellbat suit with a different wing configuration right here, you know, because these hexagon shapes, you know, you can move them around, so you could have this kind of thing going on with the wings. Uh, but anyway, getting onto the rest of the articulation without these on here, uh, you cannot really move the head up much at all. And this is actually the very first piece that actually had pop off on me on any of these McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures was the head, but it just popped right back on there. But it will not look up more than that. Uh, you can move the head down just a little bit. We'll move side to side, you know, while at an angle and you do get some head pivoting right over here uh, these shoulder pads are on ball joints so you can rotate them side to side and they'll shift out of the way very nicely i like that and you can pivot them right there shoulder joint moves outward that far and down you also get an armpit joint here it does shift forward and back and shift up and down you get a bicep swivel single jointed elbow once again it does meet the 90 degree mark and then you get those same ball jointed wrist joints where you could turn them side to side and move them any direction you want and then you get an ab crunch oh it's just not really shifting forward right over here. It's more like an ab wiggle forward and ab wiggle back. You do get side to side motion and a little bit of pivot. And then you do get a waist crunch forward and a waist crunch back. And then side to side motion along with pivoting right there. Uh, hips move outward all the way. So hell back and do the splits and you'll kick forward that much and back uh, you do get some good thigh movement right over there that's as much as it's going to move side to side then you get double jointed knees right here then the ankles can turn side to side you do get beautiful ankle pivot they will move down and up and we get to articulation just to make it easier for size comparisons i removed the wings and to measure out these two figures you can see that the hellbat suit is standing over seven and a half inches tall along with the unchained armor even though uh, those horns are ears or whatever you want to call them up there go up to the eight inch mark and then for a size comparison we have the unchained armor in the hellbat suit next to the action comics 1000 superman and the detective comics 1000 batman and these scale okay together i guess you know As someone recommended in my last review of these mcfarland dc multiverse figures i should try a head swap with the action comics 1000 superman and i was able to get the head on there but when i removed this head sculpt the pin stayed inside the head so on the superman figure the pin stayed in the body so it doesn't really I mean I don't know hopefully if you're lucky enough uh, the pin will stay inside the body and then you'll be able to just port it on there but for right now if this is what I got then here's the unchained armor and hell bat suit next to the DC collectibles thrasher suit Batman from the Greg Capullo wave and these two figures give me the same kind of feeling I had with this I mean this is still pretty exceptional with the removable helmet piece and individual finger articulation I mean this one's still all out but it's twice as much as these over here and then here's our new McFarlane toys figures next to the DC essentials shazam figure and yeah you know you can see that these fit into a seven inch scale as well as six inches we'll see and then here they are next to the dc multiverse classic superman and the dc uc batman figure and man again i gotta say comparing the mcfarland dc multiverse to the mattel dc multiverse is like night and day i feel like we're getting so much more stuff i mean these are build a figure size pieces right here i mean or collect and connect size pieces right even though the dc multiverse collect and connects are larger but still i I mean, they are bulky figures. And here's the Unchained Armor and the Hellbat suit next to the Marvel Legends Spider Mech suit or the Build-A-Figure SPDR. And yeah, I feel like this Hellbat suit has the same mass as this Build-A-Figure right here. It does stand taller, of course, but you're looking at much lankier legs and everything. Plus, I don't even have the wings attached to the Hellbat suit right now. And then here's the Unchained Armor and the Hellbat suit next to your average six-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Badass Spider-Man. Okay, all right, I don't look at you guys, all right, you both uh, you know, looking pretty badass, okay, so I'm just gonna uh, step over this way and get the hell out of here. So, man, I can't lie, dude, I honestly think these figures are amazing. I, I think they are just absolutely spectacular. I am very happy with them. Now, again, uh, the Unchained Armor figure could probably use some accessories. The Hellbat figure, for me, is my favorite piece out of the whole set of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures that we've seen so far. I mean, I've opened all of them. So, so far, it's my favorite one. But uh, I got to say, man, at the price point of 20 bucks, just 20 bucks for each of these figures right here, you are getting a hell of a lot of figure. So I'm going to give the Unchained Armor Superman figure a sud rating of... I love it! And the Hellbat Suit Batman figure a sud rating of... Ah, yes, I'm so awesome.
and yeah, I had to give them separate sub ratings because I just like that Hellbat suit more. Uh, I just love that figure so much. So sick. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you don't mind. And please check out that Patreon account over there in case you're in the position to do so and support. It'd be very much appreciated. And I got to thank all the people over here who have their name up on the wall. Thank you guys so much. If you want to see the latest in action figure news, you can find it all over at toynewseye.com. And don't forget to follow me on the Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Uh, posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. It's okay. That's crispy. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.